Back in 2019, I reviewed the Sennheiser Ambio Soundbar, or as it's now referred to as the Ambio Max, due to the introduction of the Ambio Plus, which came in in late 2022. Indeed, a lot has changed since then, from the addition of Sennheiser's very own subwoofer to rival manufacturers actually stepping up the game. Now in this review, you can see how it compares to some of the alternatives out there and to see if it still is the best flagship soundbar on the market. Now it does not come cheap. In the UK, the soundbar itself costs £1,800, while the subwoofer comes in at £600, therefore tallying up to £2,400. While in the US, the subwoofer can be found for $700 and the soundbar can be found for $2,500, therefore coming up to $3,200. So to kick off this video, I do want to talk about its design and it is actually quite important because the Ambio Max, when placed on a cabinet, will take some of the lower portion of your screen and might even block the IR sensor to your television, meaning that you might have to utilize it in a slightly different way. Now of course you can wall mount the soundbar but it weighs in at a whopping 18.5 kilograms, all worthwhile considerations. Now aside from that, the overall look of the soundbar is actually pretty stylish. It's got a fabric material that stretches around the frontal profile while towards the top it's got a mesh grill and a brushed aluminium type of look. Speaking of which, at the top of the soundbar you'll find a flurry of physical buttons which are certainly appreciated over haptic or touch sensitive buttons found on some rival alternatives. Equally, you have a forward facing LCD screen that provides you all the key information such as the volume or indeed the metadata in use. And you've also got a 2.5mm jack input which is solely used for the microphone calibrator which is provided in the box. Now if you do want to control the soundbar from afar, you'll be pleased to know that there is a bundled remote which feels really premium in hand and allows you certain controls. But better still, you have got access to a further degree of customization via the Sennheiser Smart Control app. Now through it, you can adjust the volume of the soundbar, check the input, toggle the ambio or night modes, go through the different presets and also customize them individually in terms of their EQ and ambio levels. And then through a separate tab, you can also see the metadata that's being used, customize the Dolby settings and also adjust the lip sync delay, among a few other system settings that are there. Better still, you've also got the ability to pair it up with one of the connected services such as Spotify Connect, Tidal Connect or the likes of Apple AirPlay or Google Chromecast. Now for you to utilize the app and also the music streaming services, the soundbar must support some form of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and indeed it does. Now the latter will want to be used sparingly because it's limited to the SBC and AEC codecs only. Therefore if you want to get higher quality transmission over a wireless connection, you'll want to use Wi-Fi such as let's say Chromecast or Apple AirPlay or of course one of the other music streaming services that I mentioned before. Now this does perfectly lead me onto wired connectivity and here you have got stereo RCA inputs and a optical connection where 192 kilohertz is supported which is certainly appreciated. On the flip side, however, you've only got three HDMI 2.0 ports. Now this will only be of relevance for console gamers out there because if they want to feed through 4K 120Hz, well, they won't be able to because the soundbar is limited and capped at 4K 60Hz due to it running on the HDMI 2.0 standard. Now oddly, in terms of outputs, you have got HDMI 2.1 with the eARC capabilities, therefore allowing you uncompressed Dolby Atmos data to be fed through and therefore allowing you to get the best out of the soundbar. Of course, if you got an older television whereby the ARC standard is supported only, it is backwards compatible. Now aside from all of this, there is also a singular subwoofer output in form of a mono RCA. Now this is certainly interesting because unlike a lot of its modern rivals and including its sibling, the Ambio Plus, there is only wired connectivity that's available for a subwoofer. And as a result, if you have this wall mounted and you have the subwoofer, be it a third party one or indeed Sennheiser's very own, then you'll have to have a cable trailing from the subwoofer to the main soundbar unit. Now on another note, if you do switch on the soundbar or indeed switch between audio sources, you might find that there's a little bit of delay before any sort of audio is produced. And that's due to the way that the soundbar is dealing with the signal. It's a little bit cumbersome and I did notice it previously in the Creative SX5 Carrier, a compact Dolby Atmos soundbar, but it's a little bit frustrating. 
Equally, there is a small bit of static sound that can be heard from the soundbar. Here's how it comes across. Indeed, the static sound is quite faint, and this was when my microphone placed right next to the soundbar, and with the soundbar, of course, with no sort of other exterior sounds coming across. Now, this was noticeable for me with sensitive ears while I was sat at my sofa, but it's not something that really threw me off. Just something I thought I should highlight because it's not a phenomenon I've noticed before in any of the other soundbars that I've reviewed. So with all of that out of the way, let's get on to the sound demos. Now, I appreciate it's not going to be ideal over YouTube nor using my microphones, but it'll give you a bit of a taster. Now, first off, we'll be playing back Priya J's track, which is titled Like Me, in order to demonstrate the musicality of the soundbar. Then going over to Miles Kundra's track in order to demonstrate the capabilities of the subwoofer and indeed with it disabled. And then also the dialogue capabilities of the soundbar, whereby I'll be presenting the Voxel Astro Hybrid on Toastly EV. Make sure you check out the annotations on your screen because I'll be flicking through different modes and presets so that you can therefore understand how the music is actually being played back while you're hearing it. to its pretty ugly exterior design. Sorry, Vauxhall. But a lot has changed since then because now in its eighth generation model, it's more stylish than it ever has been. And it also is available as a hybrid powertrain. And that's exactly what we have on review. Now, the bad news is it starts from 37,000 pounds with the Ultimate and GSE trims coming in at a whopping 40,000 pounds. So in this review, you can see if it's actually worth this price tag and how it compares to some of its modern rivals. Now to kick off this video, we have to talk about efficiency because arguably it might be one of the most important factors while considering the hybrid variant. Now with the sound demos out of the way, I would like to quickly run through the audio configuration of the soundbar. And here it has got 13 drivers with 13 Class D amplifiers, giving you a peak power output of 500 watts. Now this is comprised of six four inch cellulized sandwich cones, five one inch tweeter aluminium cones, and two 3.5 inch top facing full range drivers. The combination leads to a pretty impressive frequency range from 30 hertz all the way up to 20 kilohertz. Now as for the subwoofer, it has a upward firing long throw 8 inch cellulized cone driver, which has a peak output of 350 watts, thanks to the inclusion of a class D amplifier as well. It has a frequency range of 27 hertz up to 80 hertz, meaning the total system can go from 27 hertz all the way up to 20 kilohertz. So what does this all translate to? Well, in summary, an absolutely phenomenal audio experience and one till this day, and in my opinion, is unrivaled. Now, let me break it down for you. First off, in terms of the sub bass tones and taking the subwoofer out of the equation, the main soundbar unit gets all the way down to 30 hertz. 
Now, just putting that into context and saying how impressive that is, soundbars out there that have a dedicated subwoofer get down to roughly 34 to 37 hertz, if not a little bit worse. As such, the main soundbar unit on its own is extending further than ones that actually have a dedicated subwoofer. Now, if we were to throw in the subwoofer into the mix, here the Sennheiser Ambio Max gets even better. And why? That's because the audio signals that are produced for the sub bass tones are being thrown to the subwoofer to deal with it, while the main soundbar unit can focus on the mid bass, the mid range and the highs and of course the overall soundstage reproduction. Now from my own audio test and my own subjective opinion, I felt that with the addition of the subwoofer, the soundbar certainly sounded better. And that is certainly very impressive to say the least and a potential consideration that if you're looking at the Ambio Max, you might want to consider getting a subwoofer, be it from Sennheiser or of course via a third party manufacturer, for example, Hi-Fi systems out there, which offer a RCA input as well. Now putting that sub bass rumble to a side, what about when it comes to the mid bass slam? Well, quite frankly, it is absolutely done to perfection. Of course, you can EQ it to your heart's content via the app, as I did mention before, but in my case, I felt that the overall quantity and quality and equally the control was excellent. I had no issues or quarrels whatsoever. Similarly, the overall mid range is absolutely class leading. Now I know Sennheiser is kind of renowned for their overall mid-range presence in terms of let's say their headphones and earphones and other audio products, but it's great to see it again translated to the Ambio Max. And remembering my own impressions when I had reviewed it back in 2019, I can safely say that it's one of the best mid-ranging sounding soundbars out there on the market. That's a little bit of a mouthful to say, but over here in terms of the mid-range, it really does come across accurately and comes off to the foreground. Of course, it really depends in terms of the settings that you're using, but from my own settings that I used and from my own subjective opinion, I just think that in this respect, it's really got no competition. Equally, when it comes to the highs, they extend very well at the top end without sounding too harsh or sibilant. Indeed, over here, I had no sort of ear fatigue and it gave me that sort of toe tapping feeling when I was listening back to my favorite tracks or for example, watching movies. Now, aside its competencies across the sound frequency range, what really stood out for me and really brought back memories from 2019 was its overall soundstage reproduction. See here, the overall width and depth, the tonality, the imaging and the instrument separation were absolutely class leading and I can safely say this is somewhat in a league of its own. Indeed, over here, there's no other soundbar that I've heard or reviewed that can really compete in this department. The 13 audio drivers work in absolute magic, be it if you're running any sort of heightened metadata like Dolby Atmos or DTSX, and yes, we'll touch upon them very shortly, or just a regular PCM input, for example, when you're watching terrestrial TV or a YouTube video like this one. Indeed, the Ambio technology really brings everything to life and makes you feel, well, somewhat content with what you're consuming. Better still, here, the Ambio technology can be customized between off, light, medium, and also the boost mode. Now, what I will say over here is on the stronger mode presets, there's a little bit of an odd reverb. I'm not sure if you picked that out with my audio demo, for example, when I was playing back Priya J's track titled Like Me, there's a bit of an odd reverb on the higher Ambio settings. And therefore, you'll probably want to resort on the lighter Ambio mode setting if you're, let's say, consuming regular content, or indeed, let's say, listening back to your favorite tracks. So with all of that in mind, let's get on to a movie demo. I'll be playing back Transformers Age of Extinctions and like my audio demos that I showed before, I'll be going through different presets. So make sure you check out the annotations on your screen.
Now, yet again, my microphone is not going to give you that lifelike reproduction, so let me get onto my subjective opinion. And here, the use of heightened metadata such as Dolby Atmos or DTSX is going to give you a seriously impressive experience. So much so that it left me turning my head when I was listening back to that audio demo from Transformers. Gunshots bouncing off my walls, helicopters flying above me, dialogue coming clearly in front of me and not being drowned out thanks to its mid-range competencies, and my overall room being filled with sound. It just felt really good. Now granted, audiophiles and audio enthusiasts or cinema files out there will say, hey, if you were to get a true Dolby Atmos experience, in other words, having speakers positioned in your ceiling and behind you, you're going to get a better experience. And yes, you will do, but then you're going to need an amplifier, a receiver, a complicated setup with wires dangling all over, and of course, drilling holes in your ceiling, which is not going to be feasible for every consumer out there. But what about one of the other soundbars? What about, let's say, for example, the Samsung HW-Q990B, which I previously reviewed, and is another flagship soundbar from Samsung? Well, here, this Samsung soundbar does a phenomenal job across the frequency range and also giving you good soundstage and also including those rear drivers, which give you that extra bit of room-filling experience. But in my opinion, comparing it to the Sennheiser, the main standalone unit over here trumps all of that, purely due to the overall competences it has across the frequency range, and also paired that up with a subwoofer, it means that I'm just getting a far superior experience. You then also have, for example, the Harman Kardon Citation 1100, HK1100 for short. That one is also another great solution, but again, in terms of the main standalone unit, it still can't quite compete across the entire frequency range and therefore giving you that sort of cinematic experience in comparison to the Sennheiser. In short, the Sennheiser is unrivaled, at least in my opinion and from other soundbars that I've reviewed. So with all that in mind, it brings me on to my verdict, which you can potentially see where I'm going with this. If you want a standalone soundbar and you've got the room to accommodate it, and or if you want a subwoofer only, then I don't think there is any other solution out there at this price point that I can compete with the Sennheiser Ambio Soundbar Max. As a result, it gets my best buy award. Now I'd be curious to know what you make of it down in the comment section below and if it's something that you would pick at this price. Would you go for the full hi-fi shebang or would you go and save yourself some money and go for one of the alternatives from let's say Harman Kardon or Samsung? Let me know down below because I'm genuinely curious. Now if you've liked this independent detail review, definitely do consider dropping a like, subscribing and hitting that bell notification, all of which would be greatly appreciated. As such, I've been totally dubbed and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.